time for Voice of Indy. Your hosts today are Beam Weeks, author, producer, and marketing monster for independent multimedia publisher Fresh Ink Group, and Stephen Jeeves, author, producer, composer, and publisher for Fresh Ink Group. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to another stunning, star-studded episode of the Voice of Indie podcast. This is episode number 141. I am your host, Beam Weeks, and with me, as usual, is the chocolate-covered almond-eating Mr. Stephen G's. How are you doing tonight, Stephen? I'm doing great. <clears throat> the chocolate-covered almonds was dessert. I've been eating Florida sweet corn for the last two days. <clears throat> when Every mid-April, when the Florida sweet corn makes its way to the grocery stores in Alabama, the world is a beautiful place. I'm a sweet <laughs> corn fanatic. So, uh, you doing all right with the weather up there? Doing fantastic. We hit 80 degrees today, sunshine. Uh, of course, the weekend's going to slap us back down to reality because we're not supposed to be this warm at this point. But just a, a good stretch of, you know, five or six days here where we we got the, the sunshine smiling on us. And uh, this weekend, though, we're looking at, I think, the low 40s again. So, we... yeah, but we'll rise back up the week later and We'll be in full full spring. Well, we've been busy at Fresh Ink Group. Uh, we've yes, had, we have. what, seven or eight authors join our membership in the last two or three weeks alone. I'll mention a couple of them. We've just uh, added Maureen Howard, and she's got a trilogy, three novels, and uh, we're working on the Dai Yang, which is uh, her first novel in that trilogy. She also has a book of mermaid paintings that she's done herself. She's an artist as well as a writer. And uh, we're going to be publishing a book of mermaid paintings by Maureen Howard. We also have a fellow who's been on this podcast before named George Dismukes. George has decided to see if Fresh Ink Group uh, can put out a book that looks pretty good and, and reads pretty good and maybe even sells a few copies. So the next George Dismukes novel called Paradise My Prison will be a Fresh Ink Group edition, and we're looking to have that in pre-sale, hopefully within a week, two weeks tops. So welcome Maureen Howard and George Dismukes. We also have a book that came out this week, and uh, the ebook edition is out there everywhere for sale. The paper book edition is out there everywhere for sale, and the hardcover edition is out there everywhere for sale. But hey, surprise, surprise, on Amazon, you can't see the hardcover cover yet. That seems to be the pattern lately. It seems to take us one to two more weeks, if not longer, to get those hardcover edition covers to show up on Amazon. But you can always click and see the cover on the other editions. That's How to Paint an American by Andrew McGregor. We've got a trailer for it over on YouTube in the Fresh Ink Group channel where our subscriber numbers keep growing each week. And you're going to hear the audio commercial for that during tonight's show. So well, check premiere. out How to uh, world premiere, yeah. Check out How to Paint an American, and keep in mind, we're going to have the author, Andrew McGregor, on this podcast just uh, a few weeks from now. So, How to Paint an American. Get out there and check that out. All right. Uh, yeah, so uh, a few weeks ago, we had uh, one of our authors on here, Carlisle Tom. His uh, new novel, The Calling Dream, is out. It is available in all of its glorious copies, uh, hardcover, softcover, ebook. Uh, we have a, uh, a, a video over on YouTube for that one, and uh, go over there and check it. Hit that like, hit the subscribe, uh, help help a, a channel out. And uh, yeah, now Carlos is really us... active on Instagram too, so go check him out over there. He posts yeah, all kinds well, of stuff. Yeah, he's yeah he's big time on on Instagram, uh, and he's approachable. If you want to say hey to him, he'll say hey right back at you. Now don't let us have all the fun tonight. Uh, you can call in or you can join on Twitter and ask questions or uh, comments, and uh, here's how you can do all that. Call 516-453-9902 right now with your questions or comments for tonight's guest, or post a note on Twitter with hashtag Fresh Ink Group in the body of the tweet, and we'll read it on air. That's 516-453-9902 or hashtag Fresh Ink Group on Twitter. And see, right. just like that, author Joe Condrell popped up on Twitter with a hi, everyone, at Voice of Indie Podcast. Looking forward to the show tonight. We've got a post from uh, uh, Freshing Group author Helen Burrell, too. We'll hold that until uh, we have today's guest on because she's got a question for her. All right. Now, 
We've got an audio book out. We've yeah, got an audio, an audio book. book. Another yeah. one. We're excited about it. Uh, and the author, Robert G. Williscroft, and I were over in looking at the audio book sales last night for his series, and they're doing quite well. Uh, we were impressed with the numbers. And in that series, we have uh, the Mac McDowell Mission series, which is his uh, submarine thrillers, Cold War submarine thrillers. Uh, there are four books in that series now, and there are four audiobooks out there, and all four are performing quite well. The new one, Operation Whiteout, a Mac McDowell mission. The books are out there, all the editions, ebooks, hardcover, softcover, and now the audiobook is available as well. If you're into audiobooks, if you're into submarines, if you're into Cold War thrillers, or if you just like Robert G. Willis Cross writing, go check that out. Yeah, you know, <laughs> that. That whole Cold War <laughs> submarine, that would make a great name for a sub shop. Going to get, get a turkey sub at Cold War Submarine. Yeah. All right. Uh, Redemption, A Father's Fatal Decision by Gwen M. Plano. That is out as well. And uh, we've got a uh, video for that over on the YouTube channel. Uh, this, is, this is the one that uh, is really getting the raves. And Gwen's a fantastic writer. But I'm reading reviews from multiple people that are saying, numerous people that are saying, this is the best thing she's ever written. So get over there and grab a copy of that and then go back and discover the rest of her, her work. Uh, she's a, Like I said, she's a fantastic uh, writer. So uh, yay, Gwen. Yeah, she's got a three-book thriller series, too. The second two editions have been published by Fresh Ink Group. And we also uh, republished her memoir. Uh, yeah. Which is which is uh, you know about dealing with abuse and overcoming some some obstacles and learning how to find a new way to look at the world and look at life. So she's got some great books. Definitely check them out. Now our next bumper here, the beam's about to roll, is going to tell you how to subscribe to our newsletter. And I want to tell you, we take this newsletter seriously, people. We we, do. we check that we we get up every morning and check that list. And it's the last thing we do before we go to bed at night. And I also want to tell you that when you unsubscribe, we see that too. We've had a couple of times now in the past six months where somebody wanted to be on the podcast and they come on here and, uh, you know, they're a guest. And then uh, about two days later, they unsubscribe to our newsletter. And it's like, whoa. So hey, that's not on. a return guest. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, hey, yeah, let's be cool about this. But yeah. if you want to subscribe, here's how. Stay on top of these podcasts and all things Fresh Ink Group with our weekly digital newsletter. New releases, videos, stories, excerpts, interviews, and more. Sign up now on the homepage of FreshInkGroup.com and be the one who knows what's what. Yeah. So let's yeah. have a quick look. Go ahead. Let, let, let me just throw this in. If, if we invite you on as a guest and then you turn around and unsubscribe, you will not get the support from this, this show. You will not be reinvited on this show. And we've actually had people who have done that, where they've unsubscribed after being a guest. Then, you know, eight months later, a year later, they've got a new book coming out, and they hit us up with an email. Hey, can I be on your show again? Uh, you unsubscribed. You know, what was yeah. that? You're, you're using us is what you're doing instead of, yeah. you know, facilitating a relationship where we help each other. Yeah, and it's and that's what it's all about. Indie authors supporting each other, indie artists, indie yeah. musicians. Uh, for example, Joe Conjol. We didn't know who Joe was until Rob and Joan Carter introduced him to us. We asked him to be on the show. He had a guest, got to know him, liked him. Uh, we like his work, and now he's supporting the show. He's on Twitter right now with a comment. That's what we like to see. Call in every once in a great while or post a tweet and just do something to show your support because other people were supporting you when you were a guest. It works both ways. Yeah, and he's got another comment out, too. He says, I've got a new release out also, Best Served Cold, a Tony Razzolito P.I. Story Book 4. So, All right. Uh, and while I'm at it, uh, Jill Mayer, she said, here in Denver, it snowed last week, hit 81 degrees today, and it's supposed to snow this weekend. Get <laughs> <laughs> the frantic weather. Yeah, Jill's a supporter of the show, too. We always appreciate that, Jill. Yeah. Jill has called in before. Jill has posted tweets, and Jill Jill has helped spread the word to others so that we can build this audience. Because it takes a lot of effort and no small amount of expense to put these shows on each week. And the authors who come on here really would like to have an audience and find find some new readers for themselves. 
we're trying to make that happen. Yeah. So let's let's look at the best sellers in the print editions from Fresh Ink Group this week. Now these are print only. I don't see the ebook numbers. That's all separate. But right now our top five print best sellers. Let's start from the bottom and work up. In the number five slot, How to Teach Driving, the Parents Edition by Kenneth Lindquist. That book is moving steadily. Um, there's two editions that are part of that series. One is the Instructor's Edition, which is for people who want to learn how to be instructors and how to get themselves certified according to the different standards in whatever state in the United States that they live in. Um, and that's doing well, but the Parents Edition is, is really taking off. So apparently there's more than a few parents out there who really would like to see their teenagers learn how to be good, safe drivers. And honestly, you know, I, I, you know, not to put too fine a point on it, but there are not many people in this world who haven't at some point known somebody that was lost in a car wreck. And, you know, helping your children be better drivers, be safer, and look out for themselves and know how to make the right decisions, that's a very laudable goal. So we're proud to have that book in our stable. Congratulations, Kenneth Lindquist. You've got the number five slot this week. All right. Number four. I don't know if you've ever heard of this book about uh, or not. Uh, if, if you were listening when I talked about it a minute ago, you did. How to Paint an American by Andrew McGregor has moved into the number four slot. This book's only been out for a matter of days. The hardcover edition just popped up on the retailers uh, in the last 48 hours. Uh, in fact, there's a couple that it still still needs to pop up on. So just coming right out of the box in the first few days, Andrew McGregor's debut novel, has surged into the number four slot on our print bestsellers this week. Congratulations, Andrew. Number Andrew. three slot, Shipwrecked and Rescued, The City of Banger by Larry Jorgensen. Larry's a retired journalist and full-time historian now who goes out, finds the stories, <laughs> investigates, collects the data, gets the pictures, and brings them to Fresh Ink Group so we can put these things out in beautiful books like Shipwrecked and Rescued, The City of Banger. This is the one, the story of uh, shipping... 240 Chryslers across Lake Superior, which is uh, up at the top of Michigan, trying to get them to Canada back in the 1920s when the ship, wrecked, the ship foundered and wrecked on a shoal. And they wound up having to rescue the crew. And later, Walter P. Chrysler sent a crew back to try to rescue the cars. Did he get the cars? You're going to have to get this book to find out. It's a very cool story. It's wonderful history. It's uh, the Keweenaw Pen Peninsula at the top of Michigan. It's got all the local flavor, great historical photos, and there's a really cool trailer for it made by Fresh Ink Group over on the Fresh Ink Group channel on YouTube. So check that out as well. We had fun making that one. We actually managed to get yeah. get it to get to form icicles on the letters and whatnot. So sometimes we, we, we get silly, but we have fun with it. Now, that brings us to the top two slots, and uh, the same title is in both of those slots, number one and two, hardcover and softcover. And... Not to put too fine a point on it again, by a very wide margin over the books in the three, yeah. four, and five slot. <laughs> That's one a of the very wide margin. Oh, margin. Yeah, and the name of that book is Submariner, 30 Years of Hijinks and Keeping the Fleet Afloat. And that's by retired Naval Lieutenant Commander Jerry Pate. It's 60 chapters of memoir, stories about what life was like on a submarine, the different adventures they went on, dealing with uh, recovering the uh, exploded space shuttle uh, remains and uh, guarding Guantanamo and things like that. He had a Russian spy move in across the street from there. There's some, just some cool stories and anecdotes in there. And that book is really, really taking off, especially in the naval community. He's getting interviews and reviews. And uh, uh, last, last we checked, two days ago, he had 98 reviews on Amazon already. So what? We can't get 100? Come on, people. Get out there and get those reviews posted as well. So congratulations, Jerry. Submariner, 30 Years of Hijinks and Keeping the Fleet Afloat by Jerry Pate. And Fresh Ink Group author Robert G. Williscroft helped him compile those. So he's listed on the cover as a, as a co-conspirator. And uh, uh, Robert, of course, is a retired naval submarine guy as well. So he knows his way around this world. And, and Jerry's a good friend of his, and they worked on this together. And, and we couldn't be prouder to have this be a Fresh Ink Group. So congratulations, Jerry. Congratulations to what each of, each of these authors that are on that list as well. Yeah. Uh, and uh, speaking of new releases and whatnot, uh, coming soon we have, as we remember, a history of the Women's Relief Corps of Beaufort, South Carolina, 
by Najma Thomas. This is a uh, historical look at the uh, Women's Relief Corps. It's a, a great uh, bit of African-American history, but more importantly, American history. And this book is loaded with uh, incredible photographs, uh, comments from the people who were there uh, for all of these uh, in- incredible events that, that uh, these women uh, performed. So uh, keep your ears uh, on this show and your eyes on the newsletter and on Twitter and social media. Because uh, this one's uh, getting ready to be uh, coming out pretty soon. So you're definitely going to, if you're a history buff, you want this one. Yeah. Now, I was talking to Fresh Ink Group author Abigail Hugini last night. She's the one who put out the book about the generations of people who came out of Green Pond, South Carolina, uh, and went on. These are the descendants of slaves, and they went on to do uh, great things, great accomplishments, and and whatnot. And, uh, you know, we're real proud of that book, too. And last night we were talking about the next two books that she's bringing to us this year. And in the process, I mentioned to her that uh, we're getting ready to put out, as we remember, a history of the Women's Relief Corps of, and I said, Beaufort, South Carolina. And she said, nobody in Beaufort would say Beaufort. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right. so apparently it's what part of the country you're in, because a lot of people would say Beaufort. It looks like I, Beaufort. I think yeah. that's fair. Yeah. Like uh, but, uh, <laughs> but, she, but she was quick on that one. So uh, I'm going to reiterate, I mentioned earlier that we've got a new book coming out by George Dismukes. That's a suspense thriller called Paradise, My Prison. The the book is ready to go. We're finalizing the cover, having our digital artists do a painting for this, and uh, looking forward to getting that out in all ebook editions, soft cover, and a dust jacketed hardcover. And George is starting to make some noise about maybe an audio book, too. So, hey, we'll have to see what happens there. Paradise, my prison, and the second book will be Earache, my eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any Cheech and Chong fans get that? But yeah, uh, we certain have age. another one. <laughs> yeah, of a certain age. <laughs> we have another one coming out. Uh, this one's a children's book, and it's called Daddy Yo Yo and the Legendary Marble Tournament by Janice Tony. And this one is a lessons learned book. It uh, teaches children uh, why it's not good to be a bully, and it's much better to show kindness to one another. And uh, it's done in a excellent uh, means to where the children will understand it and they'll enjoy it. And it's got some really great artwork in there as well. It's a picture book, but it's also a chapter book. Or yeah, I guess it would be considered a chapter book. Uh, but it's got a lot of really cool pictures in it, and uh, that's coming out soon. So, again, uh, the newsletter and this show and social media, keep your ears and eyes open, and we'll let you know when it's available. Yeah. Now, over on Twitter, uh, I see Verwayne Greenhoe has popped in. We were a little bit worried, Verwayne, because we hadn't seen you yet so far. He says, I'm here, just finishing some work around the house. Yeah, Verwayne prioritizes this podcast. We We really appreciate his support. And you got another one there, Beam. You want to take that one? Yeah, Joe Congelis says, Hi, Patty. Out of all the different types of books you've written, the oh, you know, this is a, uh, That's a question, a question yeah, for, the, for the guest. So we'll hold second. off on that one because uh, yeah. we're going to bring the guest in here in just a few minutes. So uh, we will remember that, Joe. So Yeah. We'll now, before we, before we tell you how to find this show in the archives, I want to do a little bit of teasing here. The Fresh Ink Group has about 250. 50 something titles last I looked. Um, so our, our list is starting to build. Technically, we're a mid sized publisher now. We're not a small indie publisher. We're, by the definitions that, that companies like Ingram use, a mid sized publisher to have that many titles and that many authors. But our best selling author is Mark Herndon. Those of you who know Mark, he was the drummer for the supergroup Alabama with. Uh, 49, I think it was 49 number one hits over their years. He played with them for 26 years. Um, And then things kind of went sour and they wound up parting ways. And if you want to know what happened there, his book, The High Road, Memories of a Long Trip by Mark Herndon, tells that story. It's the unvarnished truth. The The man takes it. He admits his mistakes. He talks about all the dynamics of what was going on, and he doesn't trash anybody. He takes the high road, and it's just full of wonderful stories, wonderful pictures. It's just a great book, and it is so far the best-selling Fresh Ink Group book we've ever put out. We published it in 2016, and it's still usually in our top 10 uh, to this day. Now, what I want to tease you about 
is Mark is married to country singer Leah Seawright. And those of you who are familiar with this show, you've heard that both of them have been on this show a couple of times. And you've heard us play some of Leah's country songs. Well, they are in the process of getting ready to release more material from Leah. This summer is going to be a big time for them. In fact, in South Carolina, in the Myrtle Beach area, June 3rd, which is the traditional June jam time when the band Alabama plays in uh, Fort Wayne, in, or Fort, Fort, Payne, Payne. Il, Fort Payne, Alabama. Yeah, I'm from I'm originally from Michigan, so Fort Wayne's right there <laughs> on my tongue. Uh, yeah. yeah. Fort, so Fort Payne, Alabama. Um, and this year, June, they are bringing the June Jam back with Alabama on June 3rd. But at the same time, Mark and Leah and their band are going to be in South Carolina. I'd rather go see Mark and Leah myself. But they've got some big things happening. There's some big sponsorships happening. There's a, a tour that's going to be announced. There's a whole lot of things I'm not even allowed to tell you about. And, yeah. I've, even got, and I've even got the new song on my laptop here, and I'm not allowed to play it for you. Yeah. But I'll play it. I'll I play it too. for my friends. Yeah. <laughs> I'll play it for my friends. Yeah, Yeah, and I just want to tell you that uh, Mark and Leah are going to really get some spotlight this summer. So we're going to be talking about them. We're going to probably get them back on this show again and talk about some of that stuff and maybe play that new song or several new songs for you as well. So if you're a fan of Mark Herndon, if you're a fan of Leah C. Wright, heads up, people. Things are about to take off in the coming months, and we're going to keep you informed. All right, so... uh... Again, keep your eyes and ears open for that one. Uh, if you're like Verwain and you're busy out in the yard finishing up yard work and you might accidentally forget that the show is on, don't worry. we got you covered. All of our episodes are in the archive, and here's how you can find our archive. Find your favorite show in the Voice of Indie archive on YouTube at Fresh Ink Group, StephenG's.com, BeamWeeks.com, FreshInkGroup.com and on Spotify. And now, you can listen on iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, and tune in. Just search The Voice of Indy, all one word. All right. Now, be, before we meet this week's guest, we're going to go ahead and roll our first commercial, and this is a little bit of a long one. This is the Mac McDowell Mission Series in support of Operation Whiteout, the new audio book that is out from Robert G. Willis Croft and Fresh Ink Group. Now, from Fresh Ink Group and best-selling author Robert G. Williscroft, the Mac McDowell Mission Series. With a security clearance above top secret, Saturation Dive Team Officer in Charge Mac McDowell leads his team into critical Cold War counter-Soviet missions. Watch Mac prove what brave men can achieve under real pressure, the kind that will steal your air and crush the life out of you. In Operation Ivy Bells, it's the summer of 1972 when Mac and his off-the-books deep-water espionage group are conducting a daring undersea wiretapping operation to gather Russian intel and avert world war. Join nuclear submariner Mac McDowell for extreme diving, a battle with giant squid, and more as he risks everything in the most dangerous operation yet. In Operation Icebreaker, Mac McDowell is leading his submarine team for a mission to lay SOSIS arrays under the Arctic ice when they clash with a highly automated Alpha-class Soviet submarine. Overwhelmed by mechanical problems, the Soviet crew abandons their sub near Point Barrow, Alaska. The skipper launches DSRV-1 Mystic so Mac and his crew can board the empty sub and gather intelligence. The arrival of an even more advanced Soviet sub leads to breathtaking underwater clashes with the specter of war looming. Will Mac and his crew be sunk by the Soviets, or will they safely return to Alaska, where Mac's new love, Kate, anxiously waits? In Operation Arctic Sting, Mac McDowell and his team capture the abandoned Soviet sub. Piloting their prize through the ice pack to the U.S. East Coast, they must evade or confront other Soviet subs trying to recover the ship or sink it. Breathtaking deep-sea clashes erupt, including hand-to-hand combat with Soviet Morskoi Spetsnaz divers under the ice. Too far from Toothis to escape, the Americans are accosted by a five-ton orca. Will Mac's ship survive long enough to reach friendly waters, or will the men become just another meal for a deadly whale? In Operation Whiteout, Mac McDowell's Toothis tangles with Argentine subs in the South Atlantic, then confronts a Chicom sub off Thurston Island. Escorting a Taiwanese sub, Toothis is attacked by a Chinese Han-class sub and a North Korean AIP sub. 
Will Mac complete his mission, or will he meet his watery grave on the Pacific's abyssal plain? The McDowell Mission series by Robert G. Willis-Croft is available worldwide in jacketed hardcovers, paperbacks, ebooks from Kindle to Nook and Kobo and more, plus exclusive audiobook editions with music and sound effect. The Mac McDowell Mission series is proudly published by Fresh Ink Group. Take a breath and dive in for thrilling submarine adventures in every Mac McDowell mission. All right. So, let's meet this week's guest. Let's. Author Patty, go ahead. I said let's. Oh. Author Patty Wiseman is a native of Seattle, Washington area. She moved to Bartlesville, Oklahoma after high school to attend the Wesleyan College. After college, she moved to Northeast Texas, where she met and married her Texas-born husband, Ron. Her two sons are grown and pursuing their own dreams. After a 25-year career as an administrative assistant to a financial professional, she retired and is finally living her dream. She has settled into the writing life with gusto. Eleven books are published, and she is still writing. She's accumulated multiple awards and enjoys mentoring new writers. An avid history buff with a weakness for a good riddle, her books will keep you riveted as you try to solve the mysteries and are swept away with the romance. A special treat is having her granddaughter, Savannah Cameron, featured on the cover of two of her books. Her favorite quote, find out who you are, then do it on purpose. And that's from Dolly Parton. Welcome to the show, Patty. Welcome, Patty. Thank you. It's so great to be back here again. Yeah, that's right. This is your second visit. Second visit. It it is. Yeah. That means Patty did not. That means Patty did not unsubscribe to the newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> I did not unsubscribe. No, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're we're trying to build that list up. Not watch it dwindle down. <laughs> right. <laughs> we uh, we have. Well, I trouble. tell people about you all the time. So. Well, and, and we appreciate <laughs> that. But man, we we get in there and see a couple of unsubscribers. Oh, you dropped off, Stephen. So hey, let's remind hey, people. Yeah. You were you into reading and writing from an early age. You want to ask me that again? Because you cut out. Uh, yeah, you cut. Uh, you cut out, Stephen. Ah, I wonder why. I'm not touching anything here. I don't know. Um, yeah, I was asking you, uh, you've been on the show before, and we've talked about these a little bit. Uh, what kind of a kid were you again? Were you into reading and writing from an early age? I was. Um, I was the kid with the flashlight under the sheets at night reading, and I would always bring home the maximum amount of, amount of books that you could bring from the school library. And I entered a lot of poetry contests and um, things like that. But after I graduated high school and went to college, I focused on music and um, kind of let the writing fall by the wayside. But because life happens, you know, a career and then kids and everything. But I, I have a fresh career of 12 years now since I've retired uh, that I have just concentrating on my writing, and I'm loving every minute of it. Now, uh, we know that you're originally from, you're a native of Seattle, and uh, you live in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. You have a connection uh, to my hometown, Lansing, Michigan. You want to share that? I do, yes. My father was born in Lansing, Michigan, and... Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, grew up in uh, Detroit until he was about five years old, and then uh, they moved to the Seattle area. But my grandfather was born in Kalamazoo, so I have a lot of roots, a lot of uh, family in Michigan. So I, I thought yeah. that was kind of a neat connection we had. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh... Because when we were off the air, you would ask where I was at, and I said, you know, I'm just outside of Lansing, Michigan, and you were like, holy cow. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Well, I yeah. thought you were in New York, so. <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of people think that, you know, because of the phone number here, it's a, it's a, it's a New York exchange for this uh, the studio, but uh, I'm in Michigan, and Stevens yeah. in Alabama. Yeah, that much closer to that Florida sweet corn. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> Is it chocolate covered? 
Uh, yeah, I'm starting to <laughs> I'm starting to doubt the wisdom of having a bowl of chocolate covered almonds sitting here while I'm trying to do a show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, Stephen, you uh, got your microphone situation taken care of? Because it sounded like you dropped off. Can you hear me, Stephen? Yeah, he, he did drop again. off, didn't he? Yeah, he's uh, he's having some kind of an issue over there. But uh, uh, all right, so uh, now you went to uh, you attended Wesleyan College, um, or yeah, attended I Wesleyan did. College, and after that you moved to North. Northeast Texas. Now, what what did you study when you were in college? Um, and I do you have any plans music. of ever going back and, uh, and maybe chasing an elusive degree? You know, I no, I didn't because I found out that I love to sing, and I sang in groups a lot. And um, but you know that just wasn't for me. And then of course. Um, Life kind of got in the way. And during my financial career, I did achieve some degrees and in finance and um, some certificates and those kind of things. So I felt like I accomplished what I needed to accomplish. I, but, of course, looking back, I wish I had studied journalism and gotten a degree there. But... It hasn't stopped me. I I'm still writing, and I think I do a pretty good job of it. <laughs> hmm. So, are people hearing me now? Yeah, yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. It's Blog Talk Radio has dropped me twice now. I've had to come back in through a different route into the studio. Well, if that it happens, happens again, again, I may have to call in. Call in. I I've done it. Just yeah. <laughs> I've and, done the show and by the my way, phone before. All of you out there are welcome to call in. Uh, right. Talk to our guest today. The phone number is 516-453-9902. Uh, that yeah. time before I cut out, I was going to suggest we let Helen ask her question that she had posted on Twitter and let her ask it in person. Okay. Let's uh, bring in uh, Dr. Helen Burrell and uh, see how she's doing tonight. Hello, Dr. Helen. Dr. Helen Burrell, you are on Helen. Here. Okay, she may have stepped away. So we're going to go ahead and put her back on hold and uh, maybe try her later. Yeah. All right. So you want to knock out another commercial, and then we'll talk to Patty Wiseman, author Patty Wiseman, some more. All righty. This is the world premiere of How to Paint an American by Andrew McGregor. In the wake of September 11th, a man who grew up with his mother in Eastern European brothels comes to New York City searching for an adventure, identity, and home. The USA has other plans for him, though. It'll give him what he wants for a price. A series of imposed quests drives our beleaguered hero through America's dark heart, from New York to Boston to a Walmart on the outskirts of Atlanta, where he finds and spreads damnation and salvation while working the night shift. Published worldwide by Fresh Ink Group, grab your copy of Andrew McGregor's How to Paint an American in jacketed hardcover, softcover, and all ebook formats. How to Paint an American. Yeah, it's, an, it's a really cool book. Uh, great story. Yeah. I've already, I've already read it. So. And we had a lot of fun making the video for that. We animated paint splatters and stuff like that. And uh, that's over on YouTube in the Fresh Ink Group channel. I'm looking at it now. We're already up to 37 views, and this was just posted a few days ago. All right. Yeah. So I didn't hear the last thing you asked Patty, so I'm going to pause for a minute and let you uh, carry on. Um, the last thing, that, the last question that we had talked about was uh, her education and uh, if she had any uh, future plans to, to chase another degree. But you did bring up something, Patty, that you you enjoy singing and, and music. Uh, what is it? What what kind of music do you sing? And and are you still involved in that? It was gospel, uh, and the college that I went to was. Um, a Christian college in Bartlesville. And I haven't 
been singing for many years now, but I, I'm, except around the house, of course, and I still break out and, and sing, but um, no, I don't really do that. I, I have my head buried in my uh, books, you know, in, in writing. So <laughs> yeah. that's, that's my love now, you know. Uh, there's a guy at church, at my church, that uh, pretty much every Sunday, like clockwork, he asks me uh, when I'm going to join the uh, the choir. <laughs> and I give him the same <laughs> answer. You don't want me singing in that choir. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'll, leave, I'll leave it leave it there. I, I, I do the, uh, the, the live uh, uh, YouTube stream for, for the services. I'll stick with that. Yeah. Steven? Yeah, I just lost Twitter. These things are going okay. weird. Oh, today. no. Yeah, yeah it may I'm, be your internet, and that's why you're dropping No, I've got, I've got full 100%. Just uh, something weird oh, today. I'll tell you what. Uh, we have uh, the question on Twitter from Joe Conjo. I'll go ahead and knock yeah. that out. Uh, Joe says, hi, Patty. Out of all the types of books you've written... Do you have a favorite genre or category that you prefer? I do, actually. Uh, I love historical fiction, and um, that's what I started with. I had uh, my too. first five books were uh, historical series, and so that's my favorite, even though I've written contemporary and a children's book and a uh, ghost story and that kind of thing. I I prefer historical. Yeah, that's I, I do too. And I, I'm I'm looking at your books here, and uh, you've got several that are set in the 1920s. That's my favorite era. I just I love that era. It is mine too. <laughs> do you have some and favorite historical writers? Um. Well, uh, Diana Gabaldon or some say Gabaldon, she writes um, the Outlander series, and hers are, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of um, time travel, but they go back, I mean, way back, you know, in the 1500s and, and what whatnot. And um, I, I think she's a fascinating writer. She's very popular, and she writes description like nobody else that I've ever read. And so she, I would say she's my favorite. Cool. All right. Yeah, Beam has a historical novel out, Jazz Baby, which is, I think, his best-selling book. And uh, yeah. I've, yeah. I, I, yeah, I've read that one, Beam. Oh, okay. I've read it. All right. Yeah. Well, the one I'm working on now, which hopefully will be done in not too long, I'm down to about the last chapter and a half, is another historical fiction. This one's set in 1910, so it's just before the 20s. Cool. Yeah. So our guest today is Patty Wiseman. It's not too late to call in if somebody has a question or a comment for Patty. That's 516-453-9902. It would really, really bring some sunshine to the world if people would call in. Yeah. So Get off your desk and and, and make the call. Yeah. So, uh, Patty, uh, I know we talked about this briefly the last time, but tell tell us about your writing process. What does it take to get you to the keyboard and and when and how and where do you set goals? Are you a passer, an outliner? You know, uh, what's your process? I am not a pantser. I think I started out that way, but I found out that I don't do well that way. I would paint myself into a corner, so to speak. And so I developed a loose outline based on Jack Bickham's um, book, scene and structure and it's just a loose outline that he has in the back of that book that tells you what's supposed to be in each chapter and uh, who the POV should be and and what should be happening and so it's it's very loosely done and I follow that but my process pretty much is that I take all my subjects, all my books, are based on actual events that have happened in my life. Now, I fictionalize them, you know, to make a a great story, but 1920s 
series is based on my grandmother, who was born in Detroit, Michigan, Beam. And, yeah. um, you know. So was I. She, so was I. Yeah. So was, so was she. Was, <laughs> yeah. She was a, a wild child, and she, uh, her parents arranged a marriage for her. And my dad was a product of that marriage. And so I wrote a series uh, about her and her escapades, her brush with the mafia, and different things like that. Um, and then I have, you know, um, a contemporary book that's called That One Moment that is based on my father's uh, love of mountain hiking. And our, I took and fashioned a story that took place in the mountains in a survival camp. <clears throat> I've done a story about a, a woman that was forced to retire from her job, and um, that kind of happened to me. So, And I've written a children's book that um, – based on a true story that happened with our dog that that um, saved two baby fox from drowning in our pond. So all of my books, and, and including this last one, The Lost Opal, uh, are based on different things that have happened in my life. And um, that's my process is uh, I, I just started another one. I'm in, in the fourth chapter, I think, and it's a popcorn thriller and um, just had something happen through Ancestry.com that sparked a, uh, an idea in my head and I have been pounding the keys for the last few days <laughs> getting this down. So that's kind of my process is that I look back on the events of my life and I can fashion stories out of all of these things and it's very exciting <laughs> now yeah. as part of the as part of the process um do you use beta readers or outside editors or do you all do all this by yourself i do use uh beta readers and critique partners in fact i do a zoom um event uh, usually every friday we get on together and we've sent each other our pages and we go through them and, you know, correct things or point things out or, or whatever. And um, I do use uh, uh, an editor and she um, will go through the final draft and, you know, help me with that. Uh, mostly, but I, I'm i kind of a picky person, and so I do a lot of self-editing myself. I'll yeah. go back three or four times until I'm so sick of the story, I, I can't hardly stand it. <laughs> well, that's know? a good thing. That's a good thing, but it's always good to have that set, extra set of eyes go through it because they'll find something that you may be too oh, close yeah. to the story to notice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, great. Well, Patty, we're going to start talking about your books here. We're going to roll another commercial first, and then we'll see what you've been up to. Okay. In 1945, 10-year-old Ronald Dennison, the son of a backwoods Arkansas preacher, began having profound dreams about religion and a strange red-haired woman. The dreams follow him for decades, with a woman sometimes seducing him, other times calling him to become a televangelist, but eventually berating him for his sins of lust. She holds a secret so dark that he dares never admit it, even to himself. The more famous and wealthier he becomes, the more he struggles with his adultery, his fetish, and his shame, until his torment can no longer be contained. Staggering revelations challenge everything he ever believed. Will truth bring him the peace he always craved? Or will the woman's demands prove more than he can bear? Read the novel The Calling Dream by Carlisle Toms. Proudly published by Fresh Ink Group in hardcover, softcover, and all ebook formats. The Calling Dream by Carlisle Toms. All right, that is available cool. now. And wherever you buy books, 
Yeah, so, and check uh, out that trailer over on YouTube and the Fresh Ink Group channel, too. It's a very cool trailer. We're proud of our trailers. I don't know if you can tell, but we're proud of them. <laughs> we are. We put a lot of time and effort, and a lot of thought goes into these. Uh, we, every one we try to to outdo the next one, you know, try yep. new techniques and, and new uh yeah. New, new it's a lot tools. of fun. Yeah. So what's um, the phone doing, Beam? So we do have a call uh, on uh, the caller on the line here, and let me make sure I know where this is at. So this is going to be, uh, oh, North Carolina. All right. Cool. So we are going to take a phone call from Char- the Charlotte, North Carolina area. Hello, caller. You are on the air. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hey, Beam and uh, Stephen and Patty. This is Joe Conjo. You got, hey, uh, Joe. Got, got me on the phone this time around. All right. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Welcome to the show. No, oh, thanks. Um, I did have a, a question for Patty. Um, okay. So, so Patty, um, I see here that it says that uh, you're the daughter of a World War II Navy vet who survived Pearl Harbor. And Ooh. I guess my question is, do you ha- do you have a book out, or have you thought about maybe picking your parents' brain about what happened there, and maybe putting together a, a story of of that at all? Well, Joe, my parents have been gone for uh, a long time, gotcha. but as a child, my dad could never stop talking about World War II. He was at Pearl Harbor. He was 17 years old and on the USS Raleigh and uh, when it was bombed. And um, I have definitely thought about doing a book about that, but my dad suffered from PTSD so bad that it, it made life very difficult. And so mm-hmm. when I sit down to write that or even to begin it, all that emotion comes rushing back. And, uh, you know, he was only 17 years old when he was sitting in Pearl Harbor when the Japanese bombed. And, you know, it had a profound effect on him. And I could tell you stories that would curl your hair, you know. And Mm. uh, I want to put that down. I really, really do. But uh, so far, it's been too much of a trauma even now for me to do it and uh, I'm getting closer I think because I don't want that to slip away I think it's important yeah that it that it be told and the profound effect that war has on our veterans and uh, we have I watched it firsthand growing up and um, you know it's, it's a horrible thing it just really is, but yeah, I want I want to write that down. I do. Yeah, I I think that would be a great idea because obviously, you know, we, we're losing that generation, and you don't want to lose the yeah. stories along with it. So, you know, if you're someone exactly. that can get to that point where you feel good enough about putting that out out there, I I, I think it would be wonderful. My sons, I have two sons. One was in the army. One was in the navy. And they know all the stories I've told them. And, um, you know, I feel like if I can't get it all the way done, then they can pick it up and and do it. Because I don't want any of my family to forget Pearl Harbor and, you know, what what they went through. So it's on my list to do. I I just have to get in the right mindset to do it. (laughs) Well, fantastic. I, I think that would be a great idea. Great tribute to your dad, too. So, no Thank doubt. you, Joe. I, yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. And that's a piece of history you don't want to see lost to time. Everybody it has is. a story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, well, thanks for calling in, Joe. We appreciate that. Absolutely, guys. And thank you for your support. I appreciate the, the kind words earlier tonight. Thank you. Yeah. All just. Right. Uh, So, Patty was last on our episode 60, and we are now on episode 141. In that time, two more books by Patty Wiseman have come out. The first one, The Lost Opal, uh, that one was in February. 
That's a fantasy alt universe. Uh, tell us about that. Well, um, as you as I've said, I like to write historical, and I did five books, and then went contemporary, then went children's book, then went ghost story, and I love to stretch myself in writing, and so I chose a fantasy, uh, alternate universe, time travel, if you will, and um, I wanted to see if I could do it, and I had more fun doing this book. It's uh, about an evil mermaid who has to steal another woman's soul in order to stay on land and she has to, she has a limited amount of time to try to um, convince a man to fall in love with her. And uh, it it was kind of interesting to put together because you have to make it realistic. You know, it can't be just out there. Um, but I had a lot of help from my critique partners and beta readers that said, you know, this doesn't make sense. You need to do it this way. And, and um I did this, I wrote this book during the pandemic when I was very, very ill. <laughs> and uh, But after I came out of that and got my head on straight again, I did not have COVID, by the way. It was something entirely different. But um, I was able to put this book together, and I'm real proud of it because I've had people say it's the best one yet. So that really encourages me that um, I'm on the right the right track. And of course, like you mentioned earlier, uh, my granddaughter is on the cover of this um, book. Pretty she girl. Is, I'm looking uh, at the cover now. The whole cover you. is I think pretty. She's, thank you. I um, she's a gorgeous girl. She's in her first year of college, um, studying to be a veterinarian. But she was a theater major in high school and um, she was very very good won awards and everything and I asked her to pose for this cover and she was gracious gracious enough to so that's a that that's part of my personal touch that I put in all my books even the cover had has significance for me and for my family you know so where do you get your covers you're doing this yourself you're working with somebody I have a, <laughs> this is funny, she's my hairdresser, she is a photographer, a professional photographer, and she also does book covers. So she took the initial photograph of my granddaughter, and then she incorporated that into a book cover, and I, she, I think, because there's a, there, there's an old, um, ship in the the background and that is very integral to the part of the story because the first man that fell in love with the evil mermaid uh, well he didn't fall in love with her she fell in love with him and then he rejected her and she banished him for to forever to this ship and so a lot of the story takes place on this ship and um, but yeah, it's she's hairdresser, photographer, book cover maker. <laughs> and and she's, her name again? Her name is Tina Iliff in uh, Marshall, Texas. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I'm, I'm assuming she does covers for other people too. So uh, people keep that in mind if you like what you see here. Uh, there's always good resources out there, and Patty has found an excellent cover resource. Thank you. Right. I, I appreciate that. So, Beam, let's knock out another commercial. Uh, sure. Before we do, I want to throw out a couple of these comments that uh, Robert G. Williscroft has put up on uh, Ooh, on Twitter. Right first, he, All right. first he gives a shout out to uh, to uh, uh, Jerry Pate. He says a shout out to Jerry Pate for great sales, and uh, then he says, Patty, you and I use sub- substantially the same outline technique. <laughs> So, oh, cool. There yeah. you go on that one. And uh, I think that's it for the Twitter comments. Yep. All yeah, right. Yeah, that Willis Cross feller, he puts out a book every now and then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This one's uh, Redemption uh, that we mentioned uh, in the uh, 
earlier in the show from Guanam Plano. Family secrets can be deadly. When Lisa visits her parents one fateful Saturday morning, she hugs her father and takes her suitcase to her childhood bedroom. The doorbell rings, and one minute later, her father lies dead on the floor. Three bullets to the chest. The death of Eric Holmes sends shockwaves throughout the quiet neighborhood. But for the Holmes family, it's devastating. In this fast-paced psychological thriller, Lisa and her brother embark on a quest to solve the mystery of their father's murder. The journey takes them into a secret world where nothing is as it seems. Once the puzzle pieces begin to coalesce, they realize that their father had multiple lives. As the facts unravel, the siblings discover the true meaning of redemption. Gwen M. Plano's Redemption is available worldwide in softcover, jacketed hardcover, and all ebook formats. Published proudly by Fresh Ink Group. Redemption by Gwen M. Plano. Get it now. Yeah, Gwen M. Plano is one of our favorite authors. She's also a member of Story Empire at StoryEmpire.com, which we hadn't mentioned yet in this show. That's a resource that you can go subscribe to the blog. And three times a week, writers post how-to, good advice, things on writing, things on marketing, things on dealing with the book industry. And that's just some good stuff. StoryEmpire.com. Get over there and look for posts by Gwen M. Plano. She's got some really good ones. Yeah. So, uh, Patty, now I want to get to some of these 1920s books because yeah. I, I love that. But here's uh, the Velvet Shoe Collection. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 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 that's the one we're going to go to next. But uh, quick question here, uh, since you know I wrote Dad's Baby and that's set in 1925, and yours are based on you know family history and whatnot. What sort of research did you do to get that authentic vibe? for the, the 20s, because I know I had to do a lot of research. You learn different things. I wasn't around in the 1920s. So right. you know, there are certain things that you want to get and make sure you get that right. Uh, what sort of right. research did you do? Was it you know, on Google? I, um, well, some of it was on Google, but I actually had a friend that lived up in that area and I grew up there, and he was around my age, and I asked him, a lot of questions about, for instance, back then, did they have traffic lights? When did traffic lights come out? You know, what sort of cars were they driving? Um, what were the names of the gangs? And I, a funny uh, little antidote is that I got a review for an unlikely arrangement on Amazon one time that she said, why did the author name the gang, the mafia gang, the purple gang. Purple gang. That is so stupid. <laughs> Could, couldn't she come up with a better name than the purple yeah. gang? But that's well, that was a very real gang. gang. Yes. Yeah. And so one of my friends who backed me up on that wrote a comment back saying that was the actual name of the gang in <laughs> yeah. Detroit at the time. And, and it's interesting. Uh, but it's interesting that you bring up the Purple Gang because even though Jazz Baby's not set in in, uh, in Detroit, it's set in the South in Mississippi and Louisiana. I read a uh, a historical biography on the Purple Gang because it was of that era. So that was part of my research just to get the era down. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I did all kinds of different resources, and of course. The events that happened, I was the four-year-old under the staircase listening to my grandmother tell the adults all these stories when we would come over. They would send the kids to bed, and I would sneak downstairs, and I listened to all her stories about her escapades and the things that happened. So I had some of that to rely on. Of course, when I decided to write the book, she was no longer living. So. Um, I had to do the actual research, you know, <laughs> but uh, you have to get the era right. You have to get yeah. the type of houses they lived in, whether they had maids back then, you know, what the decorum was, uh, what was expected of women back then. And uh, see, her marriage was arranged and people will tell me, oh, they didn't do that. 
Dan. Well, yeah. her family came over from England, and yes, they did do that, you know. So. And Jazz Baby, uh, Emily, her marriage to Joby is arranged. <laughs> Yeah, her, her, her aunt's way to get it, get because my grandparents it wasn't necessarily arranged, but it may as well have been. It was set up, and then they eventually decided, hey, we like each other, so they ended up getting married anyway. Yeah. But it was sort of arranged as well. Yeah, it, it, yeah. it, it happened. It hmm. did, it did, yeah. and people don't realize that even in the 1920s, that was still being done. Um, by old school people, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, now since so, you were last on the show, you've put out the fifth book in that Velvet Shoe collection, and that one you've yeah. moved to the 1930s. So we're moving yeah. ahead in time. Uh, what happens in the Velvet Shoe collection, and is this the last book in the series, or can we expect more? Well, um, I've had a new idea. I wanted to get away from that for a while because there's five books in that series, but now that I've written all these others in between, my interest has sparked again, and um, the the an unlikely elegance is about the mob girl turned uh, legit. You know, she the police said they wouldn't prosecute her if she went legit and gave up the speakeasy and you know all that kind of thing, and so she started a new restaurant, and it's about her her journey and of course there's always the past that comes back and haunts her and um tries to get revenge so and my granddaughter posed for that cover too on an unlikely elegance (laughs) i have to get that in there um so i i do have a new idea for a maybe a sixth book in the series is there just enough time in the day i have so many things i want to write and uh, I have three things in the works right now. And uh, so getting another one squeezed in there is difficult sometimes. But it's what keeps me going. <laughs> yeah. Well, that popcorn thriller you're working on right now, you know, I'm just spitballing here, but I'm thinking, you know, chocolate-covered almond thriller. You know, <laughs> I, I just, just putting it out there. There you go. Yeah. Now, Patty, you've got some other books out too. Let's let's do a quick hit here and and see what these are about. Silver's Redemption. This is the idea that happened to, to you being forced out, and it's for an older women's audience. Yes, it's for an older women's audience, and uh, she was uh, on the East Coast uh, with a, a PR group, and her boss decided she was fifty-five or whatever age it was, and decided he wanted a younger version and uh, kind of forced her out. And she runs to Texas to um, re- just bury her head in the sand, so to speak, uh, to her father's ranch that she he left her, and she rebuilds her life there. And it's, it's a, a book of triumph and uh, trying to tell women of a certain age that, you know what, you're not done yet. You you have so much experience and wisdom to, to give. And uh, she triumphs in the end, and it's, it's a feel-good story about uh, reclaiming your worth as, a, as an older woman. Okay. Um, now, you say this set in Texas. Speaking of Texas, somewhere between. This is a ghost story set in Texas? Yes, it's in South Texas in the 1800s. That's um, my going back to historical. She's a governess at a new job. Uh, it's a three-story mansion, and she's come to take care of these kids and teach them. And she discovers a ghost on the third floor who is trapped in the library up there. He's been murdered, but his ghost is still there, can't get out. And um she basically helps him find his way back out and uh, and ride off into the sunset. But what's, what's the good part is is that you never know who the killer was until the very end of the book. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. 
Now, since we've been uh, publishing kids' books more and more lately at Fresh Ink Group, I've, I've developed a new appreciation for them. And as I look back, one of my all-time favorite kids' books is Rescue at Wiseman's Pond. Not only that, <laughs> but it's but it's a dog story. And how can you how can you not like a dog story? What's that one about? Well, we had a cream lab uh, cutter who uh, we and we live out in the country and we have a big pond and it was during the 2016 rainy season where we just had tons of rain and uh, the the rain overflowed and Cutter was down at the pond barking and my husband had a shop up the hill and he heard him barking and he went down to to, uh, find out what he was barking about and he saw these two baby fox struggling to get out of the mud and the water and he pulled them out and if it hadn't been for cutter they would have died you know and we revived them and um called the rescue people to see what to do and they told us you have to put them back because they're in the, they're in the wild you have to so they told us how to build a, a little uh den put them in there and put a camera one of those camping cameras up there and see if the mother came back and sure enough she did because fox hunt at night, and so they this was early in the morning, and she wasn't back yet, so her babies didn't know how to uh, get out, you know. <clears throat> and my husband, I, I don't write children's books normally, and my husband encouraged me to to write this one, and it it won an award, and I was shocked, you know, because oh, congratulations, it wasn't, yeah, thank you. I I wasn't expecting. Uh, that you know i just wanted mostly i wanted to do that to and there again i take events from my my life you know and um i wanted to commemorate our dog and uh you know in the end there's mrs barn swallow who sounds an alarm and there's a uh fred the turtle and uh they all are incorporated in the story it rhymes and so it helps little ones to learn the rhythm of reading. And, um, you know, so I, I, I'm real proud of that. I wish I could do another one, but I I just haven't been inspired yet to do that. I <laughs> suspect you will be, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the inspiration's out there. It, I think it's harder to write a children's book than it is a novel. You know? I, I would agree. I would agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, you sure have to choose the words carefully and, and use that economy of language in order to yes. be effective with those. Now, Patty, one yes. of the things we've always re- admired about you is that you get out there. You do live events. You meet your, your fans. You you know, you know do signings or readings or whatever it takes to get, get some people together. And we'd like to encourage indie authors to do more of that. And unfortunately, the pandemic tamped a lot of that stuff down. Have you been getting back into doing live events? I have. Um, starting last April, uh, we got back out there. We had to do it outside, of course. They weren't letting people inside, but um, we did get back out there. And uh, we sold from August to December. And then January, February is usually a very slow period for that, but that gives you a time to regroup and get ready for the spring selling season. And that's really my favorite thing to do. I do social media, but I would rather meet my audience face to face. And um, oh yeah, I gather I gather so many um, um, followers that way. And and I'll tell you one thing I do is I'm a I'm an avid bowler. I bowl on a women's league, and so whenever I have a new book out, it's an instant book signing when I come in with it you know to the league everybody gathers around and and wants to buy the book so i don't have to do any advertising or anything for that it's just they oh you've got a new book i want one you know (laughs) so uh now that you're doing these uh back into the swing of doing live events what has the fan reaction been like and uh you know what 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 kind of feedback are you getting for your work oh uh great feedback i mean they're they're glad to see me back in action again and and uh in fact it it's you probably get this too but uh they'll they'll buy the book 
and then two days later, and, and this happens to me all the time, they read it in one sitting, you know, they just can't put it down, and then they'll come to me and say, when's the next one coming out? <laughs> and I'm just like, well, you know what? It takes me almost a year to write a, a book. I'm not a – I can't write one in three months. I, I don't – I just can't. I want to get it right, so I take my time, and I I I can do one at least one about each year. But then then they complain because they have to wait another year for the next book. Well, that's a good. I don't complaint. know how to. Well, that's I don't the thing know how about, to write any faster than that, you know. That's the, that's the thing about being a writer. You you have to imagine a connection. You have to imagine how a reader is uh, is reading your words and taking in the story and envisioning your scenes and hearing the dialogue and all that. But it's such a mm-hmm. one sided thing. It's like writing to a, a blank wall, and you just have to yeah. imagine those people on the other side. So making that connection and seeing them and then hearing that feedback, boy, that certainly encourages you, doesn't it? It does, and it makes me keep going. And you know, I I just I'll do it forever if I can. You know, I just love it. I I always seem to have more material than I can put in. You know, in more books. I I I I can write ten more books. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I really like it when someone you know comes up to me and shakes my hand and says, "Stephen, I'm such a fan of yours. I really like that book of yours, The Green Mile." And Gary was pretty good too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had I had a woman punch me in the arm one time at the bowling alley, and she said it was a, an unlikely arrangement. She that was my first book, and she come up and she slugged me in the arm, and she said, "You left me hanging." <laughs> <laughs> and I went, uh, "Oh, I'm sorry, but there's another book coming." <laughs> <laughs> That's All the right. only time I've been punched, though, you know. <laughs> Well, at least they're not punching you saying, I, I hated the way it ended. <laughs> right, right. <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, Patty, uh, we're getting ready to wind this up, but uh, do you have any uh, advice to up-and-coming authors, uh, what they can, should and shouldn't do, or, you know, what they can do? Well, what really catapulted me into getting published was joining a writer's group. And uh, I belong to one. I'm a past president of, of one and uh, in Longview, Texas, and East Texas Writers Association. And um, they took me by the hand. You know, I'm, you may be a good writer, but you might not know how to get published or if you need an agent or what indie publishing is, you know, uh, different things like that. And I suggest that any new writer uh, Google your area and find a writer's association or writer's group uh, and, you know, jump in with both feet and ask questions because that's the only way you learn. Uh, it's it's bigger than just writing the book because you don't want to write the book and then say, okay, now what do I do? You want to have a plan, you know, and uh, <clears throat> excuse me, get it out there. And yeah. of course, I'm sure Fresh Ink Group would help a lot of people if they just asked, right? <laughs> yeah, but all yeah. they have to do is ask. <laughs> yep. Knock it yeah. Knock the door, phone. All right, so Patty, how do people find you out there on social media? You got some handles, you you got some favorite places that you're haunted, you got a website, a blog. What's out there with Patty Wiseman's name on it? I've got uh pattywiseman.com. That's easy enough. And easy I'm all enough. over Facebook. Yeah, and I'm I'm on Facebook and um I have a fan page, Patty Wiseman fan page. I'm on Twitter. That's at uh Patty WG, and um, I'm on Instagram, and I think that's the same handle. I'd have to look at that, but uh, yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on I'm on all of it that I can think of. Google my name, you'll find me. <laughs> yeah, and of course, if anybody wants to get a message or ask a question of Patty, we've got a contact form at freshinggroup.com. Any of our guests will always pass along messages and make sure we help you get connected. 
So our guest today has been Patty Wiseman, multi-genre, multi-talented author. It's been a thrill having her back for a second show. Thanks, Patty. It's always thank you, good Patty. to have you. Well, thank you guys for having me. I look forward to the next one. Yeah. Now, listeners, um, we're going to tell you who's coming up on our upcoming shows here. And then after that, before we uh, do our closing, we're going to roll two more commercials. I urge you to stick around for another couple minutes and listen to them. This is going to be B.A. Johnson's uh, Sassy Children's Book Series, two books so far, illustrated children's chapter books. And then Patricia A. Guthrie's cool short story collection, Eerie Charms. we got commercials for those. But next week, our guest is going to be Martin Herman who uh, we're not real familiar with him yet, so we're going to be learning a lot about him the same time all of you do. And then after that, we're going to have a return visit from a guy who did not unsubscribe to our newsletter, A.G. Fletcher. <laughs> uh, he's, he's returning again. He's uh, He was here, uh, I think, like eight months or so ago, so uh, he's got a new book out, and he's going to come in and tell us all about that. And after that... yeah. Now, we've had Robert McKenzie on the show before, too, talking about his series, The Chair 1 and The Chair 2. Well, we're about to publish The Chair 3 sometime in the next couple of weeks or so, and that'll be our guest, Robert McKenzie, talking about his chair series. And with Robert, no telling what else is going to come up. Robert is a fun guest. He really is. Yeah. So. And after that, we've got uh, Andrew McGregor. Uh, he is the author of the How to Paint American book that we – uh, played the the uh, world premiere of the commercial tonight. Uh, he's going to come in, and uh, this guy's a world traveler. Uh, he's done all kinds of cool stuff on pretty much every continent. So we're going to uh, get to know Andrew and uh, have a little talk about his book. So be sure to tune in for that. And after that, yeah. Now after that. I'm not going to be around, so we're going to run an encore episode. Now, when I was a teenager, some friends dragged me to a concert by a band called Queen, and it was the Bohemian Rhapsody Tour. So I got to see that, Four Rows from Freddie Mercury. That, this week coming up, I'm going to be in Atlanta to see Queen with Adam Lambert as the lead singer. So that, I get to book in Queen's uh, entire uh, genre, oeuvre, that way. And in the meantime... Beam will be back here in the studio rerunning the Jerry Pate episode, the most recent Jerry Pate episode. He's the retired lieutenant commander, naval lieutenant commander, who has our best-selling submariner book right now. And after that is uh, somebody else we don't know a whole lot about, Michael Scott Clint Clifton. But we're going to get to know Michael, uh, and uh, you're going to get to know him as well. And after that... After that, we've got Janice Tony. She's a retired school principal, and she's got the children's chapter book called Daddy Yo-Yo and the Legendary Marvel Tournament that we talked about earlier. So we're looking forward to meeting Janice. Yeah. All right. So uh, once again, uh, thank you, Patty, for taking time out of your day and uh, spending a little time with us and the listeners. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. And thanks to all the callers and tweeters, and thanks to everybody for helping spread the word. And since she's still on the line, Dr. Helen, we did answer them once you uh, get you on the phone and you weren't there. So uh, we'll try again next week. Yeah. Uh, and uh, have, a, have a good weekend and a good rest of your week, everybody. And we'll see you again next time. All right. Say bye, Patty. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mary Margaret Fanson. My grandmother, Big Mama, calls me Sassy. I've been a member of the African Methodist Episcopal Church all my life. I never knew why everyone was so proud to be AME. Then I met Gerald in Children's Church. He thinks he knows everything about being AME. I have to learn a lot more just to show him. B.A. Johnson has been writing a series of books about me, my brother, and my friends, with lots of colorful drawings. We also explore bullying, friendship, inclusion, death, grief, forgiveness, and more. Sassy Discovers the AME Church is about me learning about our church and something terrible that happened in Charleston. The second book, Sassy Uncovers Peter Allen's Secret, is about discovering the story of our church's founder's family and one hero in particular. These and more Sassy books are published by Fresh Ink Group in laminated hardcover, softcover, and all ebook formats available worldwide. Come on, 
Join me in Discover Why I Can Say I'm Proud to Be AME. Lucifer loses his day job, so he starts his own gig. A little girl's tantrum destroys her toys, but will they lash out in revenge? Can a miserable housewife find a new life for herself in a tear-stained old painting? Eerie charms of the short story, fantasy, mystery, and horror includes a snake deciding the fate of the world, a slot machine choosing life's winners and losers, a malevolent fairy dancing men to their deaths, a couple desperate to escape a train station, the dog show judge facing death, and more great tales. Proudly published by Fresh Ink Group, Eerie Charms is available worldwide in jacketed hardcover, softcover, and all ebook formats. Patricia A. Guthrie offers a cauldron of eerie delights that will please, delight, and yet terrify you. You've been a part of Voice of Indy, a production of Fresh Ink Group. Spread the word, support our guests, then find us at freshinkgroup.com and be sure to hashtag Fresh Ink Group.